Hello. In this problem, 3.2.20, we're going to be finding the number of payments for a loan when two, two payments happen to be missed and must be made up for with higher payments for the remaining payments. Here's the statement. A loan has an interest rate of 5% to be repaid by N-level annual payments of P starting one year after the loan, so evidently that I is an annual interest rate, an effective annual interest rate. The borrower, borrower misses the fifth and sixth payments. So he's going to have to make up for that. He's told that he, if he pays more, pays 1.16 times P, 16% uh, more than the original payment, for the remaining payments, the loan will be repaid at the originally scheduled time. Find the number of payments on the original loan. And also, the book says, give a verbal explanation of this equation which arises in at least one approach to the situation I added the one approach to in my parenthetical remark there. If you use a different approach, actually this equation wouldn't necessarily show up. So we'll, we'll try to solve this problem thinking about, about trying to get to this equation as part of our solution. And then hopefully that'll somehow help us to interpret it. Well, actually, let me include four, five, six, and seven here in my timeline. So P is the payment amount originally, starting one year after the loan is made at time zero, so we have an annuity immediate. Um, so the original schedule looks like this. Assuming the borrower pays P at all the scheduled times, you can write this visual representation of the payback scheme. But the borrower misses the fifth and sixth payments at time five and six. The actual situation is the borrower pays P for the first four payments, misses payments five and six, and then pays more, 1.16 times P, starting at payments uh, time seven for all the remaining payments. So to fit the situation at the given interest rate of 5%, the present value of both of these payment streams at time zero should be the same, or at any other time, actually, for that matter. And if we're thinking about um, trying to get to this equation as part of our solution, you see that there are n minus six payments starting at time seven and going through time n, and we have an a there, so that would be the present value of that one period before the first payment at time six. We also have an S2, that's a future value, a cumulated value of two payments. We see a 0.16 instead of a 1.16 here. Hmm, how could we interpret this? Um, think about these two payments. If we find their future value at time six, immediately after that second payment, that is going to be the quantity P times S2. And I'll go ahead and put the interest rate here as well. So we have an S2 in there, but we have a P as well. I hope it makes some sense that the value of these two payments at time six should be the present value of the extra in these payments, in these n minus six payments at time six. And what would that present value be? That would be 0.16 times P times a n minus six. And if we cancel the p's in this equation, we get to what they have here. So I think that's probably the way they want you to interpret it, with the p's in here at least, to say the accumulated value of the two missed payments at time six is equal to the present value of the excess in the remaining payments. You've got to include the P's in there when you give that description, but ultimately the P's cancel and you get to this equation. So I think that's probably the way they wanted you to interpret it. So evidently now, though, we should be able to solve for N in this equation. We're going to, if you think about it, are going to probably have to use logarithms, and in general, you're not going to get a whole number. You're not going to get an integer, but maybe we get pretty close to an integer. We can round to an integer to get the final answer here. Let's just see what happens. The calculator calculate this thing. 
first of all. 1.05 squared minus 1 divided by 0 0.05. That's 2.05. I can divide both sides by 0 0.16. Divide by 0.16. And I could write, well, using the formula for this thing, I could write 1 minus v to the n minus 6 over 0 0.05 must be 12.8125. Multiply both sides by 0 0.05. 1 minus v to the n minus 6 should be that, which means v to the n minus 6 itself, thinking about rearranging the resulting equation, should be 1 minus this thing should be 0.359375. So I did a few steps in my head there. You should make sure you can do that as well. Take the log of both sides. Uh, use the property of logs that the n minus 6 can come down in front. We could say n minus 6 is the natural log of this thing over the natural log of v. The natural log of this thing is negative 1.20233888877. I will store that in register zero. V is the reciprocal of 1.05. Its natural log is this. Take the reciprocal of that and multiply by what's in register zero to get this fraction. Add six now to, to find n. And yeah, we did not get a whole number, but close enough that I believe the answer is 27. Indeed, I checked it with my answer key. That is the right answer. 27 years was the original payment plan.